Welcome to the Astro Video Store. Today we are going to review Manos the Hands of Fate from 1966, directed by Harold P. Warren for its 55th anniversary. The story is about a family who gets lost while driving, I'm presuming around the Texas area because this film was filmed in El Paso. Oh, so they stop by a house to stay there, but they realize they are within a cult that worships some god or some higher up there named Manos. Now the family must find a way to escape. This is the worst horror movie that I ever seen, but it's also the most funniest bad movie that I ever seen. This movie really made me laugh throughout the entire film itself, and I celebrate it any time when the master raises his arms. Uh, you can't see it when I'm doing it in uh, this angle and all that. And you see the spread of the costume. It was like the best part of the film. I just celebrate like, oh my gosh, he's doing it. In any case, the story does have an interesting concept to it, but the only problem is that the way how the film, you know, executes it and presents it to the, uh, the in the movie itself is really bad. The acting and cinematography is decent. There is no creativity in the camera angles, both aside from, you know, having the main subjects in the film actually be in frame. You know, they're not like, you know, out of frame, like, oh, this character's talking, but he's slightly cut off, off and we can't really see him and all that. There's also a few shots that are, for some reason, out of focus. I think the most notable ones you could see is at the near end of the film, where you can actually see, like, where it's out of focus. But, you know, when they were making it, the director was like, don't worry, we'll fix it in the lab. And then, I think they didn't figure out how to actually fix it. But in case, the editing of film is decent, but it seems longer than it should, could be. It could really be trimmed down, I would say. But then again, it was trying to reach there for a feature length. And I think it could, could cut out about 10 minutes of the film itself. It will somewhat be good, but not prove much. But you know, you cut out like all the unnecessary stuff itself. Now I think about it, I think the, the film could have worked better if it was like a 22 minute episode. Like a TV episode, like some like, like strange TV episode and all that. It could have worked better like that. You know, family stops at a house. I was a weird guy named Torgo goes, oh you can't stay here, but I will just let you stay here. Here then. And then they discover there's a, there's a cult. Then the last act of, then the last 10 minutes of the film, or last 5 minutes, they try to figure out a way to get out, and that's how you end it. There. 22 minutes. Done. Nope. Extend that to an hour, and there we go. The costume design is interesting, mainly with the cult itself, you know, the many wives of the Master, which is all just the same aim for some reason, and also the Master himself, which is my favorite costume, including Torgo. Oh, which is, I believe, in the from the audio commentary, was Tom Newman. Tom Newman played Tor played uh, the master in the film and all that. He also provided his daughter and dog for the film, and that's why his daughter plays the character Debbie, and the dog plays, you know, the master's evil Doberman. But it kind of looks funny, like uh, funny and all that. In case, but according to him, it was actually his uh, his clothes that he actually gave for. Even or for Torgo's costume, which according to him in the commentary, he never got any of those props or clothes that he actually gave to the production back. A good thing about the film I would mention is the music itself because I really enjoy listening to it. But some for but for some reason some tracks feel like a bit out of place. You know, there's like the horror aspects of the music, but then there's like them. You know, the, I'm trying like joyful music. You know, like the opening scenes and all that. Then for and the music that is completely out of place at the end of the film when the credits and all that. Fun fact: that opening scene is just a whole bunch of car, the cars driving around. That opening scene was supposed to be like you know the opening credits and all that uh, over the footage of you know the actual like them driving around. But according to Tom Mo Newman, when they first like you know start editing the film, he goes, "Oh, I think they, they I think they forgot about that." Which is kind of funny, like you're editing a film within four hours and all that, and you just forget, you. oh yeah, we, we need to put the opening credits and all that. The film is funny in many different ways, and it's really fun to watch for me at least and all that. I think it will be fun for others to watch it as well if you just want to watch it for the sake of being a bad movie, like so bad it's good and all that. So I'll give this film 3.5 out of 5 stars. Now I only own the movie on DVD itself as you see here. This is the Synapse Films release. 
Here's the disc. It also came out with a, along with a Blu-ray. I couldn't get the Blu-ray, but at least I got the DVD. It's a 2K remastered version of film from a 16mm rough cut. Oh, which is pretty good because for a while, but it was like, before this uh, release, you know, with the new 2K, new 2K remaster, there before we had a, like a dark VHS transfer of the film itself, but somebody in the early 2010s found a 16mm rough cut version of the film, which is slightly, which is like a few minutes longer than and the previous version we had, and restored it, you know, digitally restored it and all that. And which resulted in this DVD and Blu-ray. It has pretty good bonus features here, like for example, as a commentary with with uh, Tom Newman, you know, the master, and Jackie Ray, a uh, Debbie, he, you know, j you know, Jackie Ray Newman Jones. That's a lot. That's a long name there, or Jackie Newman Jones, in case. Yeah, Debbie, you know, the little girl. And it has uh, three features, featurettes, according to here. Hands of Fate, like a documentary interviewing like some of the cast and crew, restoring the Hands of Fate, which is a documentary, like a little documentary about restoring the film itself, and also a small feature about Felt the Puppet Hands of Fate, which is I think a I'm trying I'm not sure, but it's like a puppet version of Mantle C Hands of Fate. In any case, the only thing I wish they had on this DVD release was a uh, Hortel Torgo from 2004, a 25 minute documentary which has, has an interview with one of the crew members and also the second one was like some film story and all that. The crew member is like uh, Barney Roseblum and, and all that. Uh, and he talks about great stories on making the film itself and he's really entertaining to watch. They even, he, they even have him like revisit some of the sets at the time. I'm like basically the ranch, which unfortunately the ranch was burned down in a fire, or like later in the years after the documentary from 2004 was filmed. Which when you go to it now, all you get is like the only thing remaining is like a land of dirt and the chimney itself. Well, whatever is left on the chimney, and they go and they also visit like the like the like the few the pillars and the like the like the concrete. I'm trying to figure out the material, like the concrete, like, table. <laughs> oh, the, oh, they had it in the cult area of the film where the master was there. there which is a property from the judge, uh, of the of El Paso itself and all of that. But I do see why they didn't feature it, mainly because I think the thing I noticed is that most of the information from there is also featured on this, like through the auto commentary and also through the documentary. It, but totally in a different perspective and all that. I wish they had it, but overall the bonus features on this one, it really makes up to it. Also, I heard that the documentary is a bit outdated. And I could name one part of the documentary that is outdated, which is the part where they mention where some of the crew members had passed away or, or nobody knows where they went. Which later on, they did talk about it, you know, through this and all that. Okay, so there is a sequel and a prequel, Manos Returns and I forgot the like the prequel but the prequels the prequel style but it's like a involving Torgo itself, you know, Torgo with the character, which is the best character of the film, but I consider like the master to be the better one because of the the way he is just opening his arms with that amazing costume that he has. I want to wear that in Halloween. I wish I could have wore that during this Halloween, but I just have a stuck it for my academia. But in any case. Overall, it's a really bad movie, but a very funny one. And I suggest you get this Synapse Blu-ray and DVD release. The film is also on YouTube, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. So that's all the video. Have a nice day, and later on, come back to our video store.